better. <laughs> Even better. That's usually usually who I am a lot. If you really get me. You always, like I have guests on there sometimes like you just tell they're being fake and salesy and shit, right? Really? Yeah. I'm if you see any of my other them, I'm I'm real I'm I think I'm like too real sometimes. Yeah, because I always want to do podcasts with like men. They were ask me quite they'd be like, ask me, shit. <laughs> cool. So um hello, welcome to Jason Cabin Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinus. The Jason Cabinus Experience is brought to you by Cabinus HR. At Cabinus HR, we do HR for companies with four and fewer, four or fewer people. Guest today is Tigist. Yep. BNA. BNA. Good job. Good, thanks. So um, what do you do for fun? You have a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna talk about what what would you do? What do you mm -hmm. do for fun? Um, I usually, honestly, I will, I'm, I'm really a homebody. People would think that I like to be outside sometimes, not all the time, but, um, for fun, if it's just me alone, I really just like to hang out by myself. I like to get me some good food, um, good drink, tequila. This was just great. That was a really good tequila, actually. Um, or yeah, I'll just hang out with my best friends. We'll just hang out. I don't really... Do so not. what's 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 good drink or good food for you? A good drink. So people know I like tequila and I'm particular with my tequilas. Um, food wise, I I like I like everything. I, I, I don't eat pork. That's a little, you know. So you never but, ate pork or something you recently started doing? No, I no, I've had bacon before, but are you, you know the, are you one of those people who say I want pork, but I'll fuck up a hand sandwich? No, so okay. <laughs> I don't eat pork, but man, I can do so, so a, bake, a bacon no, sandwich now. You no, know, when it's not, well, actually, like my siblings will eat pork. Mm -hmm. I just was raised, like we had it, but then we didn't. After a while, it just, when you're not around it, I just don't, Yeah. I just don't eat it. When was the last time you had some? Bacon? Yeah, or any kind of pork. Any kind of, I don't remember. No. Mm -mm. Probably make you sick eating now, huh? I, yeah, but I'm not even a beef eater like that either. No. Like I can if it was like a burger, like here and so there. you like borderline vegan? No, 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 I could not be no, we, no, no, I, I need certain things like my, my chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Like I will tear that up. Okay. Yeah. I'm a chicken wing. Yeah. So what kind of hobbies do you have? Like, like in your spare time? Mm, right now, um, I do a lot of side writing. Um, some people ask me to write some things. I'll do that. I don't really talk about that. I just do it. And then, you know, uh, I'm starting to like painting. I'm not, I'm not no artist. I'm going to so tell you right I'm, now. I'm paint my colors. Yeah, paint, paint. paint. Yeah, I like, yeah, I'm pretty much like that. I like that. That was a problem with thing. But I always, I'm always like now, like today's beautiful weather. I'm by the water. I just sit there. Yeah. I don't really. Is there any hobbies that you want to pick up or you ha don't have the time to do it yet? Mm, probably like play an instrument. I do. Maybe like the violin or something. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, I heard that. Or like the drums. The drums. Yeah, probably drums might be easier. Just make some noise. Yeah. Probably. I could see myself doing that. And then, yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe, Yeah, that's probably it. I don't know what else. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, what is the bow arrow? Thing? Archery. Archery. Yeah. I'll do that. Archery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, And so your your family immigrated here mm -hmm. from Ethiopia? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you came over here? Mm, I was, I uh, just turned one. Okay. So you really have yeah. no memories of Ethiopia, I'm guessing. No, so they came to they went to Sudan. Sudan, okay. And then we came here. Well, we went to Boston. Then we came here. You still have the Boston accent? No, I don't remember it. No. No. There's pictures of me and people. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't remember it at all. Okay. So pretty much in Seattle your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. My mom knows Boston though. She remembers. she loves okay. it. Yeah. Um do so you have any memories or did your family tell you stories about being a refugee and um, Sudan. well, when I was writing my book, I was asking my mom questions. Um, and then when my documentary came out, I was asking her, like, how did we get here? Who's this? And I hear like little bit stories, you know, but I really got more in depth with it when she told me, oh, we were sponsored by this family in Boston. There actually was like a priest. Are y'all still like in communication with these people? Or? No, she like lost contact. She doesn't know how because we move. They move. Everybody's just, you know, but. That is one thing I would like want to know, yeah. like what they, yeah, because there's still like family pictures of us with them. So I'm just curious. Yeah. I don't know. So when y'all came up, was your family like actually classified as refugees or? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And like, how does one become a refugee? Is like, is, is a refugee someone like loses a home or something, or like politically prosecuted? How does one? Become- yeah, it was like a war. Um, then a lot of us came migrated to Sudan, refugees. We got sponsored. You get sponsored, yeah. and then you come. You ever been back to visit? No, no. no I, I yeah, I do eventually. Yeah, yeah. My family's a, a lot of them. My mom brought a lot of her siblings here, mm-hmm. so we're all kind of like spread out. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've never been to Ethiopia or Sudan, but mm-hmm. it seems like in the news, it's like not a place you want to go visit, right? Yeah. Like the wars and stuff. I'm sure there's yeah. nice places to visit. I, I see pictures of Ethiopia mm-hmm. that's really nice and pretty, you know? Yeah. But... Yeah. I think it gets, you know, it's a little bit tough. I think it's everywhere, though, you know? Yeah. You go to any country, it's just so, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know? Most people don't want to go to the south side of Chicago, south side of Houston, you Listen, know? Listen, like, you never know there. They, yeah. They... Or, or like, you know, Hickville, West Virginia. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, um, no, I think eventually I will go visit, you know, but that's also money. Plane tickets are not cheap. Yeah. Mm, you been out the state lately or out the country? Yeah, I was in Vietnam, September, Mexico in January. Oh, see that, why were you in Vietnam? I have a good friend of mine took me over there. Well, he didn't oh, take okay. me. He, his wife was there for some kind of, some kind of school. Uh-huh. And he said, hey, Jason, come hang out with me for 10 days. I said, cool. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just so, yeah, I think traveling is very important. But when he first told me, he told me like in January of last year, hey, Jason, come to Vietnam with me. We're going to leave in September. Like, dude, if there was a list of 100 countries, Vietnam would be number one on one on my list. <laughs> and then, you know, so I started my, my ticket there, right? But I waited like two weeks before. Yeah. Like, Bob, Jason, when are you going to get a chance to go like Vietnam with like a yeah. god or people live there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then wait too much more on the ticket, you know? So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I think traveling is very important. That's like my trying to do now yeah. in my life. Oh yeah, you got any uh, country you want to go? You want to go to? Um, you know, no, not yet. It hasn't popped. I'm trying to still hit cities. Yeah, that's like mine. I'm like, okay, then I could go international stuff. Yeah, it's easier to travel. I mean, it's like tickets are usually cheap. You know, just depending. Yeah, there's like Google flights, cheapo air flights. Uh-huh. You know? Of course, you go like American Airlines, they're going to charge you a grip to go somewhere, right? But yeah, yeah. You got to use these sites to go. Uh, yeah, man, it's crazy. And like, don't go like in the summertime. You can't like go like off season, so to speak, you know? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun, though. That's good. That's good. I'm happy you went. Yeah. So, um, haven't been back to those places yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you're, so, was, you, so you have eight brothers and sisters, correct? Yeah. Well, they all came over the same time, or some born over here. No, so four of them, my mother and father, they had four. My dad split up. My parents split up. My dad remarried, and she already had three. And then they had one together. Okay. Yeah. So So the whole package. Yeah. So they're like, so three of them is my step. Yeah, you got to love me and everything that comes with it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so three of them is my step siblings, and one of them is my half, but we don't, we were, wasn't raised like that. Yeah. We were raised. Are you like three. in the middle of them, older, young? Yeah, I'm the, like, compared with all, all of them. them. Yeah. Hold on. I think I'm number five. Okay. And y'all are still keeping touch, good relationships, or y'all going apart? Oh, yeah, we all text each other. Some more, you know, some, some don't, but that's okay. We all still know, like, okay, just a check-in, like, okay, you're good, all right, you're breathing, okay, good, yeah. that's it, yeah. And they're here in the Seattle area or across the United States? Um, no, they're they're here in Seattle. Some's out of state. Okay. Some's local to like a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Hey man, that's a lot. You don't see that in Yeah. Yeah. What I seen people a lot more. You have? Yeah. I mean, maybe back in the day, but not now though. No, like this gen no. Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. Oh, I'll be telling people, do not do that. Yeah. One or two, okay. Yeah. You don't have any kids, do you? No, I do. I have two. Two kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Total mm-hmm. thing. 17 and no one's going to be 17 next month okay. and the other one will be eight and the both in school i'm guessing yeah any yeah. idea what the 70 year old wants to do uh she says she wants to be a lawyer okay um and she i think she wants to go out of state okay but I, yeah i don't know uh, yet i was like all right <laughs> yeah i know what you mean uh mm-hmm. so next i think either you're doing right now or you just finished doing a docuseries called walk by faith yeah Can you talk yep. about that so, and when you say walk by faith, do you mean like walk, walk with God faith or there's another type of faith? I think it's more of like walk with your, I'm very, I let people choose what they believe in on like walk by faith. It, your faith could be anything. So it's just more like having that mindset, you know, like believe in yourself wise. Um, but yeah, it was a documentary. It 
got released in January of this year. Um, but we started about like a year, almost like a year and a half. And a doc, you mean that you did, it's like some doc, documentation of your life. You did like different TV series. Yeah, like it was just straight documentary of just me, a um, couple of uh, great people on there interviewing um, about my incident, what happened, talked about my family. And we had um, a really cute premiere. It was super cold that day, by the way. So everybody that showed up, thank God, it was freezing in there. But um, yeah, we end up great. Um, we got, I think it was, yeah, it was about like a year into it. So many premiere was like, did it premiere like in a theater, on a TV show, mm -hmm. radio station? It was at um, the, in Columbia City. Okay. Um, he actually does um, a lot of, like um hosts there a lot of people play music there and he actually had his african-american like little african-american museum there during black history month so we had to hurry up and pick the time frame okay. um but yeah it was there was like a a screening and food and drink and what was your goal for the docuseries um the goal was one to really lay out because with my book i didn't really go in depth with a lot of things but with the doc series, I just went all in. So for your book, we're talking about that in a minute, and your doc series, mm -hmm. was there anything that you did not share because it was like too personal or you put everything out mm -hmm. there for everyone to see? Um, I think with the book, I shared, I think I shared enough for them to keep wondering. Um, but it was like, you know, it's your first book. So like, you don't really know, like, you know, like where to, I was really scared to like write that. You know, but now, now I, I don't care now. So, what are some lessons you learned while doing, writing the first book that you're going to take when you write your second book? Um, to really like, so my oh, that's a nice little slide in how you say your second book. <laughs> I just, um, to really, so my next project is more of a, um, like a self help book but it also has things that people need to, you know, if you want to work on and stuff like that. So I think what this one is really bearing a lot of my stories and a lot of feelings and being a little more vulnerable because I am not like that around certain people, but it's weird, but I could, I could write it all out. Yeah. Um, so back to Ethiopians, like, is there like a, like a real large or big Ethiopian community here in Seattle? Yeah. Is it's it? Ethiopian, Eritrean, um, my Africans here in general is huge. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Have you always been like that as far as you know, or is it um Yeah, when I was growing, yeah, but we all were around each other. Yeah, so it's just something normal was like Yeah, yeah. Like, it got over the years it got more. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool. Um is there is there any like anything coming on in the Ethiopian community, like any events going on that anyone should go know about or attend or check out just to learn more about the culture and stuff? Uh I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no clue. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> you can always look them up and stuff. Um, <laughs> that's just, you know what it is when you, um, it's it's sad because I, I know some of the stuff that'll be going on, like if we have community based, but I'm also a little bit all over the community. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. not just sectioned to one. Like I, I like to like help out in every other way. So back to the book, like mm -hmm. what made you decide, or we backtrack. So just when you guys found this in 2012, mm -hmm. what year did you, did you come here like, I need to write a book about this? Mm -hmm. Well, I always had it in my laptop for years, like six years. Yeah. And I think it was. So it's been two years now since the book is out. So that's when I was like, oh, OK, I guess I can make this into a story. Because I was like um, in therapy talking and she was telling me, like, you should maybe write this out and stuff like that. So I did. Um some of my like close knit friends, they're reading some of the, and they were just like, oh, hold on now. They had like so many questions and I just decided, I'm like, oh, let me just take a wing at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was like a combination of things that like push you over the edge yeah. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It was just more like, okay, I could do it. Let me just try. This is something I like and who knows? So when you first started writing this book on computer, was it more like a self therapy thing for yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I would just tell like things that was going on and what I felt. I had two kids at the time. So. I was just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to write it. Okay. Um, and was it like self-published, Amazon? Or, like... Yeah, no. So I went through a publishing team. A friend of mine, okay. he um, published a lot of books. Um, I knew another um, good girlfriend of mine. She did her children book. So I went through the people that they, they introduced me to. And then 
um, I started like do my own promotions though. Okay. Uh, my own selling. Um, went to a like a um, what is it called? Like a book fair kind of. Um, did that, which was great. Um, and then once I did that, I knew oh, okay, I have something. Then I went to I did a show with Seattle Connect, David Jackson. He um has another podcast and he does he does every a lot of people on his show um and once I got that then it got it came to me about oh you should make this a a documentary and I was like you know I got presented to me about doing a short film all this other stuff but I just didn't really and what's the name of your book again love sex and sorrow yeah and the documentary and the title obviously is two different sections but um, but yeah, that's how it got picked up. So we're writing this book. What did you learn about yourself? Uh, I, I talk a lot of shit. Sorry if I'm cussing, but I talk a you, lot. You. <laughs> I talk a lot of shit. And, um, I think also I figure out like who, who I really like starting to, you know, like who I am, if that makes sense. And starting to be like, oh, okay, I'm a pretty dope person. And I also learned a lot like about boundaries and um, people that's around me. Cause you know, once you start like being yourself and really want to do what you want to do, you start to see people like remove. Yeah. So that's exactly. what I learned. Yeah. So when you got shot, mm -hmm. can you explain like the feeling like, is it like, is it a burning sensation or is it like, mm -hmm. like when you got shot, you instantly knew something had happened or like, can you talk about that? Uh, yes. I mean, but you have that, what is it called? Like adrenaline rush through you. So yeah, it was like a burning. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I remember now it's been 10 years. So, I mean, I think, you know, you don't know what you're thinking. You don't know what, you know, what's going on in gun violence. Now it's crazy and domestic violence is even crazier. You know, well, they're both equally, you know, so. So you might not know this, but the mix of violence, Oh, that's mm -hmm. that showing that, you know, like police resource react differently, a different uh -huh. situation, like, you know, pose your um, single white female or three kids and, mm -hmm. and you complain versus like a um, single Hispanic mother, you know, mm -hmm. or it's like, or like suppose someone has called the police three times mm -hmm. and they never like file charges. Like, is, you know, if the stats that show like, there's a different reaction time or something like that? Or I think so. I think with like, if you see someone like a Caucasian woman, you know, getting beat up, like you were saying, or just domestic violence, they do take it in consideration a little more deeper than someone of color, especially a woman of color. You know, I think they do kind of want to know, is this just a drama or, you know, they're having, but it gets, you know, I think we need to really be self-aware, you know. And so this happened to you, the guy you were with, was do you have any like any like previous things of violence? Mm -mm. Anything that were no warning sign to you? No, or, no. Okay. Mm -mm. Nope. He was we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Until that happened, huh? Until that happened. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay. Like did you just like I mean, I don't use the term did you snap, but he's like mm -hmm. any 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 reason like, why you think everybody you has their moment, you know, we will never know. But you know, the way you forgive people and you truly forgive because you know, true forgiveness means you can't keep on like you know the welling on that anger yeah. right so i had to learn how to forgive and i always just wish nothing but the best never no ill will so talk about that like how do people go from like you know having mm -hmm. something bad happen to them and like man like revenge mindset versus forgiveness right mm -hmm. like how do you talk about the journey like i'm, I'm guess i'm presuming that you know what happened you're like mm -hmm. you want to revenge or have mm -hmm. bad feelings for them now you forgive mm -hmm. them like how talk about that process of journey like how can people go for like revenge to like for actual forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say you have to really first go talk to somebody because I feel like sometimes you'll have people like in your support group, you know, they won't really know what you're going through unless you go talk to somebody. Right. Um, and I think with the forgiveness or just learning how to navigate through life, you have to really figure out like what you want out of this. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's only going to be you dealing with it. Your friends aren't going to deal with it. Your family's not going to, they're going to deal with it. Like maybe like emotionally and, you know, they can see you physically. They right? Like want me to take care of the guy for you. Yeah. Like <laughs> they might be like, Oh, you know, hold on. She did what to you, bro. Like, you know, it's okay, but it's you, you have to put in all that work. And I, and I think that 
you know, a lot of people will assume like, oh, how do you, you know, I'm just like, okay, it's been 10 years, number one. Number two, um, I, I did my work to what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? So from your point of view, like how big is a problem to mix of violence in, in the United States? Is it, you always hear like stories everywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, I got course, reached I, out I, crazy. I, I, I have to imagine a lot of stuff gets unreported, you know? Yeah. Or, or they call the police and then mm -hmm. I don't press charges. You know? I got like, after my film, I had a flood of messages in my DM. Like, I'm so happy you did this. And I think it's more of showing a vulnerability side of myself that I do not weird i could show it on camera and i could write it but if we're like hanging out whatever you're not going to catch me crying does that make sense yeah. <laughs> okay so it's like a lot of them was like i dealt with someone who hit me or and you know just went through certain things like verbal verbal abuse you know emotional abuse and i didn't even think i was really part of the whole like domestic violence thing because i wasn't hit before you know so look looking back was it like mental abuse no, I think it was just honestly looking back, I think like it this happened all for a reason. And and you know what? Sometimes I'm like, okay, thank God, right? And I it's weird to say, but I don't think I will be where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you go through certain things in life or, you know, they say trials and tribulations or, you know, and it wouldn't have to be abuse, just something. You know, and I feel like that's a testimony and that's a test for you to be like, OK, now what what do you have to do here? You know, it's trying you. And I feel like sometimes, you know, we take life very precious. You know, it's so precious and we take it very a lot for granted. And I think taking these steps and what you have to do with your life and following your dream, what you want to do, you know, and keep that to yourself. Because I'm very big on not talking about projects and stuff like yeah. your dreams oh yeah mm -mm. so i'm gonna assume you've had some relationships since this happened right yeah i had a whole baby okay like, like how, how, do you, how do you keep from like taking what happened to you with this other guy and, mm -hmm. and like focusing that on new relationship how do you make sure you like have a clear shift so mm -hmm. that, if that makes any sense well after him i was in, with someone had a child um and i think Honestly, now that I look back, I'm like, oh, damn, I wasn't really healed. You know, I was just going with the flow. So after that relationship, um, then now being um, obviously still single, which is OK, which is OK. <laughs> um, I think now I think more now I'm more aware and know how to, like, you know, separate the things and not bring in some stuff. It's now I have, you know, a little more. I'm older now. Does that make sense? Like. So it's like my expectations yeah. or viewing things are a little different. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Than when it was then. So hopefully I asked this question correctly, right? So like you always hear on the news, the different places, you know, like, you know, just like on TV shows, right? Or whatever. It's just not true. Like, mm -hmm. like a female would be like domestically abused like two, three times, mm -hmm. call the police, mm -hmm. never press charges. I know some, mm -hmm. some cities like, yeah, you don't, you have to actually press charge them. Don't. Mm -hmm. So this situation is, is a way to like influence these females. Like, hey, like, you're not in a good situation. I was going to mm -hmm. something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you influence them? Hey, you know, take the next step, get out of this relationship. Or is this a matter like that to figure out mm -hmm. themselves, so to speak? Um, I think with that, it's if they're, if that person is ready for that, you know, like you have to be ready to understand what's going to happen next, you know? And don't get me wrong. Women are not just the only one. There's men too. who, And I didn't know that. I had some, some men reach out after my film was like, you know, they went through certain things and a lot of people don't believe it, but it's yeah, true. That, I mean, of course, I'm pretty sure like they call police, the police probably, I mean. Yeah, like, but I'd be feeling they, bad they for them. Be like, okay, we have a hundred calls. You're number one on the list, you know? Yeah, so like, you I'd know, be whatever. feeling bad though for them. Cause I'm like, oh wow. Cause I knew somebody, you know, who, who got like, like, you know, heart hurt yeah. that ended up in the hospital and everything. And then we haven't talked about like, you know, I'm guessing this happens with same sex relationships too. I'm, I yeah. Assume. Oh, yeah. Never, I just thought about that. I've never heard that on the news or anywhere. You like, don't hear all those things. And I think like that's it just not happen. it. It has to. And I think when they see two women, you know, married or dating and then one's by oh, there is a girl fight. No, it's yeah. some serious shit or two men like it's yeah. some serious shit. Yeah. You never hear about that. You always hear you like, don't. the typical white female. Yeah. You know? what, yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of stuff there with that one. I think yeah. it always has to do with that. We kind of have to look back, like, wait a minute now. Let's acknowledge, you know, all women too. Yeah.
So you might not know this, but is there an actual definition for domestic violence? Is like anything physical, anything mental? Is like not that I know of. Okay. Like right now, it, the work it, I'm in. Or is it mean like a, the the person in you know, my mindset? You know, yeah. Like what's the thing? Like, um, I don't know what porn is until uh -huh. I see it. You know, is this uh -huh. it? like I think a lot of domestic violence. I don't think sometimes it has to be physical. I think sometimes you be in a quiet, you being in a great relationship, but you never know what's behind closed doors. And I always like not saying you go out and you just you know peep everybody oh is he hitting you or is he talking to you are you letting let him talk to you crazy like that like it's a lot more to it you know but I think there's a lot of women who uh are very quiet I know there's signs for it they say um isn't it sound like you act, you act like timid around your person or something like that yeah yeah or if you have like a secret code there's like I learned that too there's like a secret code yeah and like you should know that code if somebody was giving you that code. Okay. Yeah. I learned that. And I was like, oh. Yeah. That's so I'm just really getting more into it, you know? Um, and just, and sometimes not even people like who are in the domestic violence that reach out, they just want to talk. So do you think there's any situation where like there's domestic violence going on? Uh, they both recognize they need help mm -hmm. and they can actually stay together. Or once you think, that happens, it's like a done deal. No, I don't know. Like if someone Honestly. mentally or whatever abuse you, like, yeah. is that okay? You need to move on or can you like be, like, yeah. dead, so to speak? I don't, I know for me, um, that ain't going to happen, yeah. but I can't, we can also speak on other people because there's some people who, you know, they get emo emotional abuse and then that person put the work in, whether it's the woman or the man. So we just don't know. I think it depends on that people. And I think sometimes we have to like, you know, you can't be in everybody's yeah. business sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes if they don't want you in, it's for a reason. And sometimes too, like you might say, you might see, you know, I'll make this name up. Um, Tammy with like, mm -hmm. like a bruise right here. Mm -hmm. you gotta, and you can assume like, what happened? You know, oh, I fell down. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe she did fall down, right? Yeah. And then you assume that, you know, he hit her, then you do all this stuff. And then it's like, okay, no, he didn't mm -hmm. hit me. I fell down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you never know. Yeah, you don't. And I think sometimes you just, if somebody wants that help, they will reach out. Or sometimes they don't, right? And you just like, and but if you've seen it, you know. Yeah. Now if she has the same like bruise on her eye, like. Yeah. Two three weeks in a row. Yeah. Then you know it's and good to ask questions. Yeah. Spots, yeah. Okay. But I think people also have to be mindful of how you approach them yeah. and how yeah, you I think say. Messed it up a lot. Yeah, because even though being like seen around domestic violence and being a a victim of gun violence, right? Because that's what I. I was too. Didn't even know that. Just, I'm telling you, I was this is all new to me a couple years ago <laughs> because I didn't um, label myself like that. And I didn't want to label myself like that, but I did want to be able to talk to people and, you know, you know, so many shootings going on now. And I see people who are getting shot, who are alive, you know, and they need some. And I didn't I didn't talk to nobody about me being shot like um, I'm saying like a professional, you know, like a therapist or a counselor until years later. And now, you know, after my film, a lot of people who did come out to me wasn't even like a, that kind of severe, but they were shot, you know, or they saw somebody who did get shot and they just needed someone to talk to. And I felt like that was like a little, I was like, okay, I like that. Yeah. And like, do stats show like, you know, like, um, I, I'm guessing like if someone was abused or domestic mm -hmm. violence in the past or seen, seen it before, like maybe seen a father beat the mother, mm -hmm. they're more prone to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, when we were when we did my screening, um, the photographer who was taking our pictures, he came to me and he was like, man, I'm so happy that you did this because his mother um, passed from a domestic violence. And he was just like, you know, nobody really talks about it. And just, you know, I was so angry for so long, but I saw this and I see how you overcome I don't know. And I was like, and I never met this man. That was the first time I met this guy. <laughs> I just knew that he was the photographer. Is there any stats out there that show, like, you know, like mm -hmm. a certain demographic, either economically or race or what do you want to call it, mm -hmm. more prone to be either domestic violence, uh, be a victim of it or, or actually do it? Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot. But see, the question, like, we go back is they don't talk about it. You'll see on the news, right? African American girl killed by her boyfriend broad daylight they talk about it but and then that's it it'll be a couple of weeks did you see the one i hope i'm not making this up because sometimes i'll make shit up right on the fly Child. it was it was, <laughs> it was a team a few years ago where this like young 
African American, like seventy years old. Mm -hmm. I can remember if her boyfriend was abusing the shit out of her, or she got kidnapped. No, she got kidnapped. These people mm -hmm. like abusing shit out of her. She killed them, and these fuckers sent her to jail for it. I gotta, I gotta find that somewhere. That's crazy. You I, see? I, yeah, and then I know, and then, then she lost an appeal, then a second appeal she won. I'm like, what type of bullshit is this? That's the system, and yeah. that's why you know people gotta vote. For certain things. Yeah. That's crazy. You'd be hearing crazy stories and you'd be wondering how the victim is in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For defending themselves or that's straight insane. You know, yeah. Or they finally was like, no, I'm tired of getting, you know, beat up or yeah. whatever. Crazy. Crazy. Mm -mm. I know. So let's talk about mental health. Okay. Is that so how do you um like how do you take care of your own mental health since this happened? You did therapy and stuff? Yeah, like I'm still in therapy. Um, I did therapy years later though. And that was, I always say like, that's probably like the thing that I wish I didn't do. I wish I did it earlier or at least like went to some kind of support group, something. Cause I didn't know. Um, but yeah, I'm in therapy now. And I think also it's a, it's a great, um, thing because sometimes people will go to therapy cause they feel like something's wrong with me, but sometimes you just need to talk. And I, over the years, learn what to share and what not to share right because i know that sharing certain things for or to certain people might be you know um traumatizing so yeah i'm in therapy i think it's a beautiful thing and i think it takes time to find like that right one too have you had the same person all this time or you have to give different um, people no so this will be my second lady and i had her for almost a few months now so how does it work? Like, does someone recommend a therapist for you? Mm -hmm. Or you're like, go, I hate this. I know you don't use it. Don't do this. But you go online and research mm -hmm. therapists. Like, how does the process work? I think, it just, I think it just depends. I, for me, being a woman of color, I found a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Because, no shade. But <laughs> I do feel that, you know, having somebody relatable, not saying victim-wise, not saying, you know, but there's relatable culture in there. That really helped me. Does a therapist have to have like experience like dealing with what you went through? No, I just wanted to find someone that I could talk to about certain things that I can't, I, I don't like to talk about. Okay. And also like that's kind of like the medical confidentiality stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk to somebody. I'm like, oh, I just... the first time I went, um, she was introduced to me by my pastor. He told me about her. He did the introduction and I went to her for a little bit. She got me out of a lot of things in my head. And so where this happened at, was that like your, your neighborhood you lived at or you're just... A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you still live in this neighborhood or you don't live there no more? Um, yeah, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so next thing, what is... um? So what do you... You have your own company right now? Is that, are you all focused on the book? Like, what do you actually do right now? So right now, I mean, I work full time, but <laughs> I do um, have my book out, my doc series out, um, working on project, another project. Um, so I'm working on that and it's, it's, it's slowly, I'm a very, like, I take my time on a lot of things. Like I'm very like this, I'm not, I don't decide right away. So this product, when do you think it's going to be about, about public consumption? Like yeah. A couple months? Like e Yeah. Yeah. It's looking about a couple months. Okay. I have a deadline in my head, mm -hmm. but it's not out yet. Okay. So yeah, but I think I think that people will like it. I mean, it's it's not a I think I think it's more of a it's a little bit of everything mm -hmm. kind of thing. You, you know? doing this by yourself? You got a team helping you? Oh no, I have a team. Okay. Yeah, I have a team. I have merch too, like walk by faith hoodies, water bottle shirts, little um books people buy. Mm-hmm. So, so I do that. So why why the title why why walk by faith versus the hundreds of millions of other things you have to Yeah. Say. Well, that one really stood out to me. Plus, I feel like if I didn't have my own faith, like just my own version of it, everybody has their own version. I think that I wouldn't really take the chances that I did because I was scared. <laughs> so here's one for you. Um, you hear this all the time, right? Mm. Black girl magic. Mm -hmm. What is what is black girl magic? Like what they find? What is that to you? I think black girl magic is. Just like you say, it's magic. We're one of a kind. And I think that once we um, put everything that all of our hard work in it, it is magic. Nobody could ever compare it to this. Nobody. 
So when you were writing your book, mm -hmm. did you, you would all by yourself. You have like a ghostwriter or no, I don't do that. I am the ghostwriter. Let's be ghostwriter. that. Make, make that very clear. Okay. <laughs> um, uh -uh. And did anyone help you with the editing or anything like that? Or like yeah, I went, sent it to the publishing team. They did all that editing stuff and like that. Um, the editor was asking me so many questions like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You did what? And I was like, okay, you're supposed to be editing my stuff. Like I need you to focus. <laughs> So when you write oh, yeah. a book, like how do you decide, like, you know, to cut it off at 200 pages? Mm -hmm. Like how do you decide what to cover? Not to cover, yeah. like, you know, like when, what, what happened? You said, okay, the book is done. Like mm -hmm. I, I obviously write on forever, yeah. but the book is done right now. I think I took a, out a lot of things. There's probably like two other characters I didn't put in there. Cause I just didn't, I didn't know how to like, I, I think with that book, I was scared to write it, but I did it for a therapeutic wise and I didn't know where it was going to be at but I also knew that I didn't want to put everything in there because it might hurt people I'm a very like I can't but the second project now everything uh, nothing, everything's gonna be out everything's gonna be out <laughs> so, so the first book after you wrote it how put this like was anything that you said about someone you're like man maybe I shouldn't have said that he is not really that bad of a person mm -hmm. I, I maybe mm -hmm. I'm the edge like me you know no okay. mm -mm. I think the one thing was, uh, so my mom read my book and um, I think she didn't realize how I feel about certain things with our relationship. And I, and I didn't, yeah. You know, the read ahead, huh? I didn't, I didn't know like that yeah. was, yeah. 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 And I was like, it's my bad. <laughs> but that's all I said was, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say, but she got a better acknowledgement of how I felt. She didn't know I felt a lot of things, a lot of people didn't know how I felt after, you know, because I got another relationship. I had a baby. I was just in this little world, you know, and then I realized like, oh, I'm in this whole la la land and I'm not really having a reality check of like what happened to me or what's going on in my head. Here's a question for you. Like these relationships, relationships you had after this happened, right? Mm -hmm. Have you like, was it like, how put this? Like, do you think like maybe these other like future boyfriends, or whatever, like maybe mm -hmm. like she like with Kid gloves, like, okay, she went to the domestic violence before. I have to make extra mm -hmm. careful mm -hmm. not to do anything that might appear I'm being like too aggressive or too anything like that. Like, do you think that kid would just kick Like, for my future, yeah, future husband, I ain't gonna have no boyfriend. I ain't got time for that. Okay. Man. Clock is click. Yeah. Like, click. click. <laughs> like, oh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, you gotta say, you know what? No, I don't, you know, sometimes I don't really even bring up like, what happened to me? I don't feel like I need to. Okay. I don't feel like that defines I mean, me, you know? It's part of your life, though. Yeah. It's a defining moment, it seems like. I know, but it's like, I think if, but I feel like half the time, they already know. Okay. I had one guy Google me. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, and I was like, is that what people do now? They yeah. Google? Hell yeah. You will Google somebody? In a minute. No. Google them, leak them. But, okay. I, okay, I know if you're going to look on their social media. But you Google them? Yeah. Everyone does it. As far as I know, yeah. So wait a minute. I have a question. Okay. So when you Google them, like, what are you looking for? Like, like background check? You might as well do a background check no. then. Background. I feel like that's background, that's necessary. Background checks cost money. Hey. I mean, you Google someone. I suppose you Google, you know, Jason Kavnis. Okay. And six down, it says, you know, I don't know. I, I, I Yeah. Something bad, right? Yeah. Now, of course, there's more than one Jason Cabins, you know? Right. And obviously, if your name's John Smith, you can't Google no one. because that's, that's Right. Top, that's right? a whole, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Maybe maybe I'm the only one that does. I don't know. No, no. I know people who Google, and I know I'm all here for the background check. I mean, that's yeah. a little extreme, but. No, I mean, if you're about to have a relationship with someone, you need a background check, I would think, right? Because. Yeah, because you just don't know. Like, me. anyone can move from Seattle to be like yeah. a petty theft. Thief yeah, and move to you know Memphis, Tennessee, and start a whole new life, right? That's true. I mean, you never know. You yeah, somebody, that you, way. you look somebody all your life, right? Now, obviously, yeah, you, you went to elementary school, okay? Yeah, school, but like, suppose, uh, like, what neighborhood in Seattle do you live in? Um, I stay by the airport. That, but you stay yeah. in SeaTac. Well, I grew up in Rainier Vista. Okay. Suppose you live in SeaTac. Okay. And someone invites you to a get together in Creek okay. Park. Okay. They'll be from before you go there, like nice little barbecue. Yeah. Meet a couple of people, you'll hang out a little times, okay. hang out with someone. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about them, you know. Right. You know, they say they work somewhere, but do you really know, you know? Um, so we gotta Google. I'm I think start doing I that. I think that's the minimum you need to do it's people should do. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, I've heard people do like I said, background checks or they'll look for their social media and stuff. Now, 
what you should not do, like don't go on someone's Facebook and go to all their 10 years of pictures, you know, like, what? like don't do nothing like that, you know. Why? That, that, that's, that's, that's creepy right there. That's cre okay, but you could Google them? Yeah. Huh. You, you go to someone's Facebook and you go back five years. Yeah. All the pictures, you know. Right. It's not the same. That, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, okay. This is that. Opinion. I know people yeah. probably disagree with me, right? No, no. Well, some people say I... take everyone on you know, face value and stuff and that no. everyone's honest, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, nah. No, no. I'm a very firm believer. If they show you the first time, believe it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and how many I people don't do that, right? No, and I observe. Some people got to be told 10 times and still don't believe it. Yeah, no. I'm a very, I observe a lot. A lot of people will assume that, um, oh, you're an extrovert. I'm an expert and I'm an introvert. I love to be alone. I don't mind sitting in a quiet room. I don't mind if nobody knows me and I'm just hanging out. I take myself out a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. But, you know, nice meal or whatever, whatnot. And I will observe people just to, you know, just just to see. But once I know that you sideways, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it to myself. What, what, there's sideways that they can never get straight again, nope. right? Nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I will keep it to myself. Yeah. And I will remember that because you already showed me who you are. And that's a good lesson, too. You need to tell people to, like, like, there's nothing wrong with going stuff by yourself, right? You don't have to. Right. Like, a lot of times you ask your friends, you want to do whatever? Mm -hmm. No, I'm time. Like, mm -hmm. do it yourself, right? Right. No one's going to look you weird or nothing. Like, nope. the movies by yourself, having dinner by yourself. Yep. Whatever it is by yourself, no one's going to think anything, right? Nope. No, no. And, I mean, sometimes I get a little... You know, I had some people like, oh, you're going by yourself to dinner. I'm like, yeah, I like to go out by myself. I go I to mean, a nice restaurant. I don't mind. If you think about it, if you eat at a home and cook by yourself, you're still by yourself, right? I'm by myself. Yeah. I don't mind that. But I don't, I feel like, you know, people get the assumptions of being lonely and alone. And I had a good friend. That's a big difference. Yeah. And he was like, you're not lonely. You have people. Yeah. I'm, you know, like that's if you're really lonely, if you ain't got yeah. nobody, nobody. Right. Yeah. But I think being alone and, you know, finding out what you like, what you don't like, what you like to eat, what you don't like to eat, trying new things, doing activities. I, I take myself out plenty of times. Yeah, more people need to do that. I mean, you could be like in New York City, millions mm -hmm. of people be be lonely, you know, or. Yeah, I think it's I think having taking yourself out or just being, you know, some time for you is very important. Yeah. Very, oh, yeah. I think that's the most that's the most beautiful gift you can really give yourself. I think. So what's the next place you're going to take yourself on a date by yourself? Um, I'm looking at a couple of restaurants. I have a good friend. He actually sent me a whole bunch of lists at one time. So I was going a little, I'm going to look at that list. Yeah. I'm going to just pick up. Oh, oh got to go. So like, do you try to do something like once a week, like by yourself, have some, um, or just like, I hate to say the word wing it. Mm -hmm. like just like, if I have that time, I usually go get myself like my nails done or a pedicure or just, you know, I do that in the morning and just have coffee. Um, I'm in a book club. Fun fact. But <laughs> and um, I love my book club. We we really get in. But yeah, I'll probably go and grab, you know, just go and grab a, a drink outside, like on a, you know, wind yeah. down Wednesday or something. Just go and, you know, treat myself. Do you have a favorite neighborhood in Seattle? Um. Favorite neighborhood. Well, I'm I grew up in like Rainier Vista area. So now I start because my best friend lives in that area. But um I just like a little bit everywhere. I don't really have a favorite. And like how do you do your schedule every day? Like if you're busy, like you like you have a calendar, you live by your calendar. I do. Okay, so you're a calendar person. I, I now I am. Like if you ask me, <laughs> I think like I've been a calendar person maybe this past year. But before, mm -mm, I was just like, oh, okay. And then I would just forget. You know, I don't know how, but I would just forget. But I am a calendar person now. And I am very like, if you tell me, hey, I need you to be here for me on an event or something, I will try to make sure I show up for that person. Uh, talk about the pros and cons of telling your story. Pros, I would say that I, I felt like a relief for myself. Like I just, you know, I was like, oh, okay, finally I get to say what I want to say. Um, con, I would say I had a little fear about what people would think. I had a great support. I mean, I had people tell me like, oh, I wish you would have done this more and did this, which is fine. I take criticism. I, at first I didn't like it, you know, but now I'm like, oh, that's, that's good to know because now my next project hit, right? And then when I had the film, that was a good thing, right? And I was like, oh, okay, great. I have something here going. So I think 
those are like the good things you you said that you wanted to do something and you did it. I'm very big on that. I I don't really talk about a lot of things that's coming up unless like like for this when we did this. OK, promotion. I wouldn't say it until it's like, OK, we set in stone. We got it. And then we're like promoting it. So why are you doing that? Like, so let me ask you this for a sec. Yeah. This project working on. What date do you think you're going to release it? Like, it'd be public now. Uh, I'm shooting for fall. fall. I'm shooting for fall. So why not, like, do, like, I don't know, teases? Like yeah, teases things? are coming up. Okay. Teases will be coming up, okay. working on that, trying to navigate through that. Um, my film is still going, so a lot of people are catching my film more now. Um, so that's always good. But yeah, I just like to, you know, t I want to just take my time and be like, oh, OK. <laughs> but yeah, teases might be coming up. There's a lot of like to it, too, you know, like. The cover, the. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff. All yeah. this stuff, you know, I've never did a photo shoot until then. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. The photo shoot, I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> some real shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, it's a lot, so, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a lot. That whole time, it gave me anxiety. I was just like, oh, my God. But, so when you're writing a book, do you have, do you have like a writing mentor to help you out? Um, No. So I scribble a lot. And I scribble a lot. I do a lot of my um stuff at night. Yeah. I can't do it like in the morning yeah. or whatever. But if I am thinking something, I'm like, oh, let me write this down. So I have a lot of like writing everywhere. And I have a whiteboard. And this idea is like you do like running past anyone to say, hey, you know, whoever. Yeah. What do you think about this idea? Should I write about this? Should I have like a different tone of voice? Anything mm -hmm. like that? I do. So I have two people. Um, and I really like for like title and stuff. I have one person um, to really talk about my feelings and certain things. It's um, one. Yeah. One person. One of my good girlfriends. And that's it. That's it. So you said earlier, like, you know, the, you had this whole writing process. I think you worked like four or five years and you're on your computer, right? Yeah. So from the, from the, from the day you decided, okay, I'm going to write a book. From that day mm -hmm. to publishing, how long was that time period? Like, I'm, I'm going to do this now till the book's in, in the store. About number. a year. Is that like normal, fast? Level? I don't know. For me, it was okay. not. I know people who just pull them out like fast. And I'm more like, oh, no, I can't. I need to. I wish I could be like that because I feel like like when I see people coming out with books back to back yeah. or like, you know, little things, I'm you like, like, yeah, you got to go. I'm like, who? how is this happening? Because it took me a minute just to get this because I want to make sure my writing skill or just like what I'm saying could be um, relatable. And, you know, my book was really I would say it was very fun because I'm I'm a jokester, but I just like, you know, trying to yeah. be the balance of this is who I am, you know? Yeah. I didn't want to be something like so hard. You know, I don't know. I just want something that people could just read it and be like, oh, I can understand her. So does anything go into like deciding the, the, the release date? Like, does it matter if it releases on a Saturday or Sunday? No. Saturday week? Mm -mm. It's just more of the editing. Okay. So when it gets published and then when it gets dropped. And before you like release a book, you have mm -hmm. you like like you send like maybe little experts like teasers to different people or different places yeah. like like mm -hmm. um, I had previews of um release dates coming up like it was like back to back for the first like month that it was gonna drop and then it went down to like two more weeks three more days and stuff like that yeah and how did you go about like like pushing out your book publicizing like did a social media push mm -hmm. did the Social Public. media push. I um was on a uh like a book fair. Um, I did that. Sold my books there. Uh, just me, just me and word of mouth was on different shows. And for your book, are you able? Is there, is there something you go to where it says like you know I'll make this up, like ten thousand bought in Seattle, mm -hmm. two thousand bought in San Antonio, twenty people mm -hmm. bought in like you know mm -hmm. somewhere in North Carolina. They feel like and they no, I didn't put anything in there. Um. I mean, the... Um, but can you see, like, where people buy your book at? Yeah, yeah. I could definitely see it on there. Um, I see also the sales, you know, or, you know, I'll have... Sometimes I'll sell them myself. Like, if I'm at an event, I'll... I think the last one, it just is all empty. So I'm guessing you had a lot of sales in Seattle. Yeah. What's a place that you had a lot of sales at? You, 
but I mm. didn't expect that to do so well. Um, I actually got interviewed by this uh, young girl in Nigeria. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And we did the interview. Yeah. I was like, where are you? Like, why are we doing? I was just so curious. Yeah. And she goes, oh, no. It's, she said something like 1 a.m. or something in her time. And I was like, 1 a.m.? Yeah. I was like, no, it's not at 6 o'clock. I mean, like an idiot. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I know people have different time zones. I know, I know but I'm like, yeah. but 1 a.m.? Like, yeah. like, what's 1? And then she was like, oh, no, I'm in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I did her. And she's um on one of my social media posts, like mm -hmm. on my profile, you'll see it. And yeah, she is a Nigerian. She did one and it was six o'clock my time. Okay. Six PM. And um she was like, Yeah, I know your film. And my but I was like, Oh Hey, I bet a hundred dollars he Googled you. She probably did because she saw my film and she pointed out very things that I even forgot that I filmed. So I was like, Oh yeah, I did say that. But yeah. She, yeah, she was very, very interested in, like, so me. They're, yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah, that was, like, my first, like, international. And then other people from different states. I had two of them, one Mississippi, okay. one Florida, one, yeah, a lot of them was not in, not in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So what lessons do you learn the first time that you're going to use the second time to make your whole process better and, and like, be mm -hmm. better, I guess? Um, Trust my gut. And I, you know, tune out the noise outside and then like people who show up for you who really want to show up for you just acknowledge those people that's one thing and then i just very like with my writing and i'm gonna trust my gut now i know so what is your writing process you said you do it at night but like do you like mm -hmm. block off an hour a day you just like start writing and mm -hmm. if you get the zone you write like four or five hours like yeah how you do that i can i'll have my whiteboard and i'm just writing it out or i'm typing it up on what i want and my vision and um yeah it take a couple hours so when you're mm -hmm. writing you like you just write and like you fix the grammar code and spelling errors later or you're like you have to fix it right then um i do a little bit of both like this one is a little bit um i'll try to fix it up then and there or i'll come back to it and like revise okay this is what i was trying to say so your book title like did you go through several different titles or that title was always in your heart to have that be the title? Um, no, that wasn't my first title. My first initial title, I just thought it was kind of be too, like, like too, too angry. And I didn't want it to be like that because I wasn't angry. But then when I now think of the title now that I have, I'm like, hold on, what did I, what was I thinking? But it, you know, it turned out great. So. Um, so your next project. Mm -hmm. You don't want to tell her right now, but is it, is it another book? Another it's going to be like a self help book okay. kind of thing. I'm still going to have stories in there, funny stories. Um, but I'm also want people to, you know, want it to be open for, you know, all ages, not just girls or women. That's my age, you know, older women, younger girls, you know. Why do you think so many people like are hesitant to ask for help? I think because it just depends on to your environment. You know, if you if your environment is a safe place and you feel like you're in a safe place, I feel like then you will ask for help or if you're brought up that way. But I feel like if your environment and who even people around you, your friends, your family, if you don't feel like, OK, I can't really talk to them, they're going to flip out. Then I think that's why. And I think some, that's why some people either they don't ask for help and they try to deal with it in their own and then they get into a deeper hole versus someone who's like, OK, I'm going to reach out to someone else to talk to, because sometimes sometimes your family and friends can't help you. You know, and that's okay. I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. So one thing, like, like my generation growing up, like, if you're depressed or need mental mm -hmm. health, you, you didn't tell anyone, right? Like, you. Right. But now, like, it's like this generation, like, more open to that, right? Which I think is a good thing, right? Yeah. How, why do you think this like shift happened in these generations? Like, where previous generation, like, mm -hmm. I can't ask for help. I'll be looked down upon, you know. Mm -hmm. But now, like, there's like mental health days. Now, don't be mm -hmm. wrong. If you ask, if you, if you take a mental health day every single day, no, that can't work right. Right. But it is a, that definitely has to be a balance, I think, you know. Why do you think that change has happened? I think because more people are advocating for it. And I think they see, like, you know, people, you know, either hurting themselves or suicide. And it's like because they didn't have nobody to talk to or they just was trying to talk, but, you know, they didn't get that help. I feel like now that people that's my age are reaching out to the youth more about it because now we understand, you know, because our parents, either your first generation um, you know, coming to America or going to college, it's really hard to talk to them when you have parents who, you know, all they know is how to work, 
hook, clean, that's it. You're going to school. That's it. Who who can you talk to? Yeah. Unless they understand the, you know, the environment that you're in. Yeah. So you know, obviously it's not the same thing. But if you're alcoholic, you have like alcoholics and non solar groups. Mm -hmm. Are there any groups like for like domestic violence? Yeah. Yeah. I think I found some like um, I joined a women's group. And we meet, they were meeting up like once a week. And it wasn't just specifically domestic violence, it was a little bit of everything. And it was just all women and you could just talk. And they'll have different people come in our um in our meetings, like um someone to teach us yoga or meditation or um talk about self, you know, self-love or, you know, anything from just varieties of stuff. So I think those are and I think for domestic violence, there is, there's totally I think it's just getting the um, group of women to be able to be open and feel safe, you know. What are some of your, I hate to use the, use the word hacks, but what are some of your hacks to take care of your mental health? Like do you meditate, do yoga? Yeah. Like TikTok, you yourself, what do you do for your own mental health? Um, usually I'm by, I like to just um, like, I like to clean. <laughs> I'll clean my <laughs> That's like totally random. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I'll clean my house, right? But then I'll make sure like my, scenery is at a point that I know that it's quiet mm -hmm. and I'll just like take care of myself. Like, okay, what do I want to read today? Or maybe I'll go for the walk. I love being by the water. So I'll just sit there by the water, listen to good music and just really take care of like, okay, this is what I want to do. So what do you do in this case? Like, of course you're busy, you don't do stuff right. Mm -hmm. And like time gets away from you. Right. And you're gone two or three days, like doing nothing for yourself. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, this has to stop. I'm doing something today. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm quick. To be like, oh, nope, mm -mm. I'm quick. Whether it's me going to church and then taking myself out to brunch, whether it's me, like I said, being by the water or, all right, the kids are gone. I'm going to give myself a face mask or just, you know, hang out. Yeah, I don't, I'm quick to be alone. I have no problem. Yeah. Um. So we, we, already, we already talked about self-love, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you convince people to love themselves? I think the biggest thing, like people are like, you know, I won't say they hate themselves, though, like, you know, like, okay, I could be better, I could do this better, but then they like love themselves, so to speak. I think they have to, you, I don't think you could convince them, they have to convince themselves. You know, it took me a long time to really like enjoy being, taking myself out. I didn't even know what that looked like. I always <laughs> felt like, I always felt like, oh, I'm gonna ask my homegirl to come with me, or, you know, like, hey, what are you doing? And then I realized like, I'm, I'm eating sushi, what? like. You know, and I think it's just it's you. You have to do it. Nobody could convince you to do anything. You could pay thousands of dollars in therapy sessions. It's you have to put in the work. Nobody's going to have to put in the work. And I'm every day I, I try to put in the work. I'm not fully like, you know, like, OK, I'm OK. But I know like I know who I am. So let's suppose someone's out there. They're going through the mix of violence, right? Mm -hmm. or they, or they haven't told anyone, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to get help. What's your what's your advice for them? I would say if they want to, they want to get the help, they need to come up with a plan. You know, I, I think a lot of times people don't know how to leave or they feel like they might be, if they leave, like that person might be, um, you know, like hurt themselves or something, you know, they feel guilty. I feel like you have to have a plan. And I think once you have a plan and you have people who support you and help you, then I think that's the best way you could like really like navigate, you know. I have to imagine it'd be even more complicated if like your family like really likes this person, right? Yeah. I have to imagine like, man, like yeah. they have to be like totally. Well, they're gonna deal with it. They're gonna have to deal with it because, you know, you don't know behind closed doors. You never know. You know? That's the time. And I think a lot of people have a hard time leaving too, especially when there's kids involved. Yeah. I think that's yeah. I think people have a hard time. And there's kids and like family involved. I think a lot of people have. I didn't know that until I, I I've heard it before. So what's 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 some of your like career goals for yourself? Um, career goals. I want to definitely continue um writing, not just for myself, for other people. I don't like I said about ghostwriting. Um, I like music, so I don't mind being in the studio. Um. I I want to be, you know, just just be part of the community, all communities and just just help my people out. So far, that's what I like. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, and just continue putting out work there and just see where, you know, where it takes me. You know, I, I know I want to be like, have a peace of mind to be healthy and just make sure my kids are good. I'm good. That's it. I don't really have a like, you know. So what are some things that you like about Seattle? Some things you don't like about Seattle? What I like about Seattle, um, Seattle is the most beautiful place. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't realize that because it rains and we have that, you know, that time of weather, but summertime is so beautiful. Like right now, I love our views. I love like once we get together, our community, it's okay. Everybody's involved and, you know, it is really diverse here. You know, that's the one thing I said, what I don't like right now is all that gun violence stuff. It's so sad. These kids are just dying. Yeah. I was thinking thing on the news, like maybe two weeks ago, with like mm -hmm. 13 year old, two 30 year old kids. Like I, I can remember if they killed somebody or shot somewhere mm -hmm. trying to rob a, gas station and stuff yeah it's you just don't know now you know i feel like the, the crime is getting it's getting kind of crazy yeah is from your book you wrote mm -hmm. is there anything you wish you could have done like you would have done over again or you would have keep the whole mm -hmm. process the same um probably be more like more open i said but other than that no i feel like it is what it is and it's supposed to be how it's supposed to be i feel like i wouldn't even be here based on that book. The docu series you did, mm -hmm. was that just like a one time event you did, or that mm -hmm. people can still watch it somewhere? Yeah, it's on YouTube now. Walk okay. by Faith, okay. um, by Tickets BNA. Um, but yeah, I am. I mean, I got reached out. People want to screen it, so we'll see if anybody wants to. Hey, <laughs> so but yeah. So your first name Tick is that is that like a Ethiopian name or just a? Name? Yeah, it's a common name, is East it? African is it common name. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Coming in. And so do you see yourself like being an author, like writing like books every two, three years on different subjects? I do. I do. I want to. You know, I think I just have to get once again in that headspace to um really want to do it. Are there any any like uh, any genres of writing you want to do? Like maybe like I want to do like an art book or like, you know. Um, I do want to do or like maybe like, like like nonfiction or fantasy. Yeah, like I was gonna do like a fantasy or a story tell. Um of like a series I do I that is a goal I would say then I would want to do like a three-part series yeah that's like something I, I would like to do and like right when like doing the stuff you're doing do you like like allocate like cinema hours a week like eight hours on Sunday three hours on Saturday or you just like do it when mm -hmm. you can I mostly try to do it um after work um a couple hours or we in the morning if I think of something I'll do it yeah, but it's just a couple out, not not as much, because I kind of really have in my mind how I want it. I'm very visual, like I have to vision things, so I'm like writing it and I see it. Stuff. Yeah, I'm more like that. I can't just do, mm -mm. and I have to write it like by by hand. Oh wow, is that weird? No, I don't know. A lot of I think that's, that, yeah. yeah, I have to like write it because I like to feel the paper. I don't know. I'm I mean, and they say if you write it, you remember more as connection. I would, more. yeah. It says like yeah. you remember because it connects your soul more, but if you just yeah. like electronic, yeah. Mm hmm. So I have to like, and I like the paper. Did you do like an audible voice book too? Um, n no. Okay. It's like you could download it like on a Kindle and all okay. that. But you did the voiceover thing? No. Oh, should have done that. You should do you that. You think I should? Yeah. My voice. Your voice sounds nice. Oh, shit. I'll, I'll probably be cussing the whole time. Hey, it's, it's authentic, right? <laughs> I'll be like, ah, god damn it. This motherfucker here. This thing. <laughs> I'll probably end up saying that. <laughs> hey, it's authentic, right? Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. So what do you do to make sure, like, you stay, like, out in the public, right? I know you're on your podcast. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to, like, how, what do you do to make sure you stay relevant? But, like, what do you make sure, like, you know, mm -hmm. you're first and foremost in people's minds? Yeah, um, I think I try to just engage with people, you know, or if they um want me to, if they see something or they remember, um, they'll reach out to me and I'll just be like, oh, okay, what is this about? And talk. So I try and I try to make sure it's um reach out to all different type of people, especially people of color. I try, um, and women too who have um shows and stuff and projects. And do you have any any mentors? Um, no, no, mm -mm, I don't kind of should want one though. All right. So next part of the question is, are you mentoring anyone? Um, no, I do get asked a lot of questions. Like, like I said, people will reach out to me. Yeah. Um, 
and I I would like talk to them and there's some obviously it's private I don't really you know discuss it actually yeah. a lot but I do have the same amount person yeah. reaching out consider you know asking but you know and I and I would you have like a I think it's called a moonshot go where you want to maybe write a book be the number one mm -hmm. New York Times bestseller oh yeah or maybe part of Oprah Oprah's book Best club book club she could do like any day she wants me okay. go ahead so Tyler Perry holla at me <laughs> I'm playing Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that screenwriting, yeah. all that, or be part of a production. Are you doing any screenwriting? Like, you trying to write a movie or anything? Or no, no, I don't think I'm there yet. I w I think I'll be pretty good though. I what know. I mean, what's the difference between writing a book and a screenplay? I think because you got to be very like with the character traits too. You got to like really like, have that vision. Yeah, of who that and that person got to be that character. Like you know, if somebody did like my book a play, I will be a hundred percent involved. Yeah. As, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to. Are you going to write any plays? Any more plays? Um, I will, I would like to write one. I don't know. It hasn't, if it gets presented to me, I would, I wouldn't mind having my little two cent in there, especially with culture base. I would like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm <but> like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I feel like sometimes people will lose that dynamic of the culture base. Like they're just thinking like it's normal certain things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Talk about mental health. Talk about soft love. Um. How long did it take for you to go from like um, actual forgiveness guy? Like, was it? Mm -hmm. Talk about it was a long process. Mm -hmm. But the, the one day you just wake up and say, "Okay, I'm good now." Mm -hmm. or, or, or you're still working with that? No, I'm still working with it on other things. Okay. Um, I think that I think that's always a lifetime. Healing's a lifetime. You know, it's what you do with it, right? And I think also when you really know like who you are and who you want to become for this life, right? I think that you, it takes time. I don't think like you, you could be healed from one thing, but there's some something's always going to be there. How about this? This is totally made up, right? What if someone said, "Hey, they come to say, no, I can give this pill, uh -huh. and this event will never happen." Uh huh. Would you take that pill? No. You, you're not okay. Why not? Mm -hmm. I feel like he made me want to, I had to go through it to realize who he was. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I had, I had to go through that, you know, and I had, and if I didn't, I don't think I will be in the mindset where I'm at of okay. being a very, cause I'm a very like, um, sometimes I'm too nice sometimes, <laughs> but, but once you know the sideways, it's a wrap. Oh yeah, that's it. Mm -mm. And but I, that took time for me to learn that too. How long does it take you to figure out that someone is out of ways? Like four or five times, one or two times. Now one time, you only got one time. Yeah. Maybe two. It depends. Yeah. But before, I used to give people like, chance or, or would think it's a normal behavior, and now I'm like, hell no, you're not normal <laughs> behavior. This is some bullshit. <laughs> you know, because you just don't. You kind of can't accept that. There's boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw so many people like they're good with breaking your boundaries, but then you can't break their like. Yeah, they be quick to tell you what you're not gonna be doing, but you, you tell them, you. yeah. So no, now I'm like, mm -mm. I do like to try to talk about certain situations mm -hmm. if I feel some type of way. I'm trying to do that, but now sometimes I don't. So I'm not. I'll just cut you off. Like yeah. I don't really. But it doesn't bother me. I'm gonna sleep great. <laughs> yeah. So is it? Hard or easy for you to make new friends? Uh, we were just talking about this yesterday. <laughs> I think it's e so I, I think it's easy because I, I like to, I like to talk to people. I like to be like, hey, I like to acknowledge them. Some people are like, oh, you could just talk to anybody or like a rock or something. I'm like, no, I like to acknowledge somebody that's standing right there. Like, hi, hi, you yeah. see me? I see you. Like, I feel like that's normal, right? Yeah. Like, you will say hi. You hope so anyway. Uh, you will hope, yeah, but I don't say hi to everybody. Cause I, I'm a very, I don't know. I pick up on energy. Yeah. I could feel you. Like I'm like, mm -mm. but I think, I, I think I'm okay, but I don't, I don't also tend to need to add anybody. Okay. Like who I'm with is who I'm, that is okay. it. And that's because I've been knowing them for over a decade. Yeah. So you're not a top person. What's that song a long time ago? No new friends. You're not like that, but. Yeah. I don't mind. Like, you know, gain, I gain new relationships a lot, like friendships and stuff. Um, but that happened all organically. Yeah. So I feel like if you force it, you kind of, it won't look right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that. I like when things are like organically or 
they want to hang out and stuff. But I'm also know how to keep like, like I have my 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 person I hang out with all the time. That's it. And you tend like the older you get, the the, the smaller your circle of people are. You... Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's half the time I don't talk to a lot of people. I don't. I act like I don't even know you. I will be in the same room. I won't say nothing. <laughs> I won't say nothing to you. Right hand to the man. I ain't gonna say nothing to you. I'm, I kid you. You think I'll joke you? Put me in a room that I don't talk to somebody. Oh, man. I wish I, I just. I, I'm the same way. I'll be like this. I'm the same. And way. they will say hello, and I'll be like, I see you. We yeah. see each other, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. I don't need nothing else. Yeah, I put people in that space sometimes, right? Yeah, you do. You do. You do. Because I feel like that's a way of, oh, okay. She's not playing. No, I'm not. Like, with not, no, no ill will. Mm -hmm. You always wish them the best. Yeah. God forbid something happened. I'll probably show up for you. Yeah. But I will never put you in my circle of friendship yeah. or, you know, get that. Like, yeah. no, 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 no. Hell no. No. As far as your, 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 so you you really consider yourself a, a, like a creative, um, artist? No, because I feel like I know a lot of people who are like creative artists, and they're so dope. And me, I just you be, might be shot yourself short. You think so? I'm just more like I have a lot of I in mean, my head though. If you wrote a book, you don't consider yourself a creative. You're probably selling yourself short. Yeah, yeah, maybe then. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I see other people who like maybe there's another thing I have to. Like, I'm learning to like not compare. You know, so. I think I am, and I think I have a different type of vision, you know, with when it comes to some of my work. You wrote a book, right? Yeah. Another one. Yeah. You did this uh, Walk by Faith docuseries. Mm -hmm. I, I would say most people see your career. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I guess I'll add that to my. <laughs> yeah, add that to your, your LinkedIn profile. To my, yeah. yeah. Instagram, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, though. Isn't it crazy? Like some people, like they do this stuff, but they don't, don't recognize, you know, like I bet anyone who knows you, oh, yeah, she's creative. Yeah. Like, yet yourself looks like, kind of hesitant. I don't. Yeah. 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 I think because we're always harder on you. You're always harder on yourself. So you think it's like lack of self-confidence or just like. Mm, I don't think it's confidence wise. I think it's just more you're just doubting yourself mm -hmm. of like who like who your title yeah. is. Yeah. Now, you know, like you talk about Tyler Perry. Now, if you compare yourself to Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. of course, he's probably better creative because he's no longer moving right. stuff. Yet. Right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But still, I mean, still creative, I think. Yeah. Yeah, now that now now. Yeah, I mean, plus you're about to learn how to paint with fingers by painting. I'm telling you, know. you, I've been on this paint. I'm <laughs> this journey of painting. I'm a, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I'm gonna slowly get there. But yeah, I mean, what, what are you gonna think? Idea you're gonna paint like birds or? I don't know. Just, I'm like, about to when I find out and when I just start have painting a something, something. Yeah, or just something. Because I went to a um, I was invited to a paint a paint and like sip and paint. paint. And sip, yeah. yeah. Um. But it was more of a like hip hop yeah. stuff. And a friend of mine, good girlfriend of mine, she was like, oh, let's go. We bought tickets. Yeah. And I really like what I paint. I mean, they had like a pre sketch and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I was like, huh, this is the most, even though I was hearing good music. <laughs> How much of the wine influenced that? Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so, cause I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. You know, I'm not good with mixing colors, but I did something. I was like, oh, I did something that yeah. I usually wouldn't do. You know, if it's not like a kid's party. Yeah. Um, but what I did and I was like, oh, wow, I really like this. And that's why now I'm just like, I can't wait. I want to go paint something. Nice. You should do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You have a lot of fun doing that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it gets your mind kind of, you know, just like ease. And isn't, I heard like doing art stuff actually like, like it's really good for your brain. Like, you, yeah. As far as like doing art, like how it opens up a new, another part of your brain that we don't really exercise. Yeah, I heard it's very therapeutic, and yes, I heard yeah. also being around horses. Mm -hmm. I've heard that too. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go find a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I heard being around a horse is very therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. So, what what are your plans for the summer? Like, as far as like summertime, fun? Yeah. having fun. Um, I have like events coming up. Like one thing I always want to do. I've always wanted to go like that three month. I guess mm -hmm. like I said somewhere in Fremont during the summertime where like it's some kind of trope parade and like people oh like, yeah bicycles with, what yeah they do that in Fremont yeah well it's Fremont Fremont so, so, yeah yeah so Fremont's like, like yeah it's a lot over there going on that's something I want to do too I I want to spend like some time this summer like spend a one week like mm -hmm. not one weekend like a day in each neighborhood right one day in Ballard yeah one day in Georgetown yeah lot, there's a lot of good neighborhoods here oh yeah 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 and I think you could find a lot of especially now in the summertime they do like um. Like Capitol Hill, they do like the 
uh, what is it called? Like a little, it's not a fair, but it's like the it's about bumper fest. Not bumper no, fest. it's like they have all these food trucks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. and like little things they have it now in different places. Yeah. So that's that's always I like to eat different foods. I'd be hesitant though, but I'll still I'll just. I mean, I speak food, speak food. You gotta take the chance. Yeah, I'm, you're gonna take your chance because you don't know what you're about to get. And when I was in Vietnam, I was eating see, I mean, street food. Yeah. Every day, right? You just yeah. That's it. Yeah. See, I don't know about that. I'll be kind of scared. I mean, I'll still eat it. Yeah. Because I just like to eat. But <laughs> <laughs> I still like, yeah, no. But no, some some travel coming up. Um, And just hanging out with my kids. Just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Keeping it simple. Because I love Seattle. Seattle's so beautiful in the yeah. summer. Like, why would you want to leave? That's why one thing. That's just not crazy. Like, you, I know some people, like, they'll, like, they'll, you know, quote, unquote, suffer through the October mm-hmm. or December. And then leave with too much in the summer. Like, what are you doing, right? Like, yeah, it's you, like you like, should leave yeah. September, October, November. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, 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 that's one thing I would love to, um, just really hang out in Washington. I just hope you know how sometimes we have like this thing called January here, where it's like it's like January and June, like rains every day. Really? Yeah, it's called yeah, it's a thing called January, where like I do not know that. Yeah, but you know, most of the time in June, sometimes in general, like it'll rain every it day. It does rain, yeah. And, and some years it doesn't. I just yes. hope we have a January. Yeah, no, we got good weather now. Yes, it's, it's it coming. Is. Yeah, it's slowly coming along. I mean, we got a little, maybe 90 days of summer here, <laughs> and you'll be good. You'll be good. <laughs> Just yeah, keep up alive. You got to take advantage of it, right? <laughs> yeah, no, you have to. You have to. Do you swim? I haven't swum in a long time. No. I don't swim, though. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. good. Yeah, do, or you could do on the boats. Yeah. You can rent out. Yeah. Um, that's always fun. I have a friend, she has a boat. What's something like fun you want to do, but you haven't done yet? Like just something totally crazy. Like mm-hmm. maybe not as crazy as skydiving. You will not catch me. But like something like jumping off shit. But something you haven't done yet you want to do. Um, I, well, I used to camp. Like, okay. Like with a tent and everything. Okay. So real camping. Yeah. Real okay, camping. Okay. So I do want to go camping, yeah. but I need like an air mattress. Cause I yeah. can't, okay. my body, yeah. we getting old. We're not yeah. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So I I wanna I wanna like do some camping. You wanna go by yourself? You have you have a group of friends that'll go with you? Um I don't know about my friends. We might have to get a cabin if I go with yeah. them. Or get like an RV yeah. and like sleep in it and stuff. I wanna do that. Yeah. I like I like um like small towns. Okay. Like countryside. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really care for that. I mean the city is cool and all. Yeah, but I like I like countryside. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I honestly I don't know why. I could be in a you, farm. You ever live in a small town? No. 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 I could be in a farm. Yeah. I'll make it in a farm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think I can make it. Milk on cows and... No, I could do that. <laughs> I will do it. If you show me one time, I will try now. Now, I don't know about the other animals. But, <laughs> but I'm dead serious. The other animals, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm, mm, you won't catch me. You won't catch me. I could. I could... Like feeding them, yeah, probably. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Like a llama, I always wanted to have a llama. What? Yeah. Yeah. You always saw a llama. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. They look like you know, they're like a good size. Yeah. You just want a pet llama. Yeah. I, was, I wouldn't mind having like a little farm in, in my house okay. one day. That's, That's like cool. have. yeah. I will have, have to sell a lot of books. Right. <laughs> Maybe go up there and get some, or like have like a horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would do camping. You're a country girl at heart. I think I am because I like those like town. I don't mind it. Yeah. That stuff doesn't bother me. Oh yeah. When you have like that one library everybody goes to. I like that. Yeah. Or everybody knows everybody. Yeah. That's pretty dope. <laughs> I would think that. <laughs> I'm serious. I, will, I think I will make it. Have you ever been on a farm? Yeah. Have you? So you didn't, yeah. mind, you didn't mind the smells and stuff like no, that? No, that okay. stuff doesn't bother me. I think it's like... All the manure and like, you know, the animal smells, you know? No. Okay. I don't think that stuff will bother me. Okay. I, I like it. I, it doesn't... I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Now, but the camping, if I went with a group of friends, I will have to like... I, It couldn't be like that. Yeah. No. We'll have to have like a cat. It'll be more glamping. Glamping, yeah. Yeah, yeah. more glamping. Have to go stuff. with the internet services. Still good, you know? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, the... What, uh, Uber Eats can get through to you in the 20 yes. minutes. Mm-hmm. Or I wouldn't mind like going like a cabin, like renting out a cabin. That'd be nice. Yeah. I don't mind that. Because we usually sometimes, we haven't done it lately, but like every summer we'll do like a family trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To like, uh, we'll go like Ocean Shores or we'll go to, like, we went to like the Hood Canal. Uh-huh. Um, We'll try like different places. 
You know one thing you should try? Have you gone? Have you gone uh, deep sea fishing? No, is that when you go inside of water? Yeah, like you go to Westport, you take in a boat like three hours uh -huh. out. You go like salmon fishing and stuff. Yeah, but are you in the water? Yeah, no, you're, no, you're on the you're on a boat. Yeah. Oh, you're on the boat. Yeah. I was talking about the other one that you. Oh, fly snug. Fly, yeah. yeah fly fishing now. This one you actually got in the ocean. Oh, see, it's, I don't know about that. I did snorkeling one time. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yep. But oh. I, but before you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think because maybe because we have some Mai Tais on there. I mean, yeah, you can drink beer and stuff on there. Oh, I don't drink beer. Okay, well, I drink beer. You bring tequila. What do you want? Tequila. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you go the okay. I don't mind fishing. I could do fishing because yeah. I feel like that's therapeutic. That's very calm. It's very calm. Yeah. And you have to have patience, right? Because yeah. you gotta. You don't know what you're about to catch. No. Shit. Yeah, I could see that. It's a okay. good experience. Okay. Good experience. Okay. That's good to know. Hey, so is there anything I should ask you that I didn't, or anything you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Um, no, I think I'm okay. Right? Do you think you didn't cover anything? <laughs> I'll probably think of something after you leave. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, can you give us your social media so people can reach out to you? Yeah. So I'm um on IG Love Tigus, uh, twenty five. And on there is my link of um, you can buy the book there or watch the film as well. If you want to um, get it from me personally, I don't mind selling this stuff, you know, uh, meeting up with people. And I sell a lot of the things there, too. So, yeah, that's where you catch me at. So why? So you're focused on Instagram, right? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. So why Instagram versus like Twitter or Facebook, all the mm -hmm. or social media? Why, why Instagram? Um, I think because, well, one, I'm, I've never had a Twitter account. Um, Facebook, I haven't had a Facebook account and I don't even know when. So Instagram kind of, for me, it was just a lot more, I would say convenience, but also a lot more people reached out to me through Instagram. Okay. Cause I, I just haven't had a Facebook in over a decade. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's probably smart move. Yeah. Cause I just, I just haven't, but I got a lot of, um, business on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. So I found that really helpful. Nice. Um, yeah. Before we get out of here, can you give us advice or wisdom or anything you want to talk about? Um, I would definitely say wisdom wise or advice, just make sure you always um, bet on yourself. Always bet on yourself, count on yourself. Make sure you um, really view the people that's around you and to enjoy the moments of life and always laugh. That's great advice, Tigas. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This was fun. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. And remember to be great every day.